Hey Scotty, would you like to dive back into Ravnica with me? Ooh, that is much better. Okay, let's do that. Hello everyone and welcome to another one of our Lazy Swim deck reviews, a series where Scotty and I take the time to go through pre-con decks, read out the cards inside and give you an idea of how strong they are and if they synergize with a given commander, the cats to the deck and how good the product is straight out of the box. At the end we score each deck inside of an expansion and guess each other out of 10. So grab your favorite drink, sit down, lay back and relax as we dive into this review. I am your host Vlad. This is Scotty. Thank you very much, Scotty, for that wonderful intro. And today we're taking a look at the last of the Murders of Carnal Manor Commander decks. This is a Naya deck. It's called Deadly Disguise. Disguise cards, big surprises. So this was the theme of the Murders at Carl of Manor expansion, the disguise. Inside the deck, you'll always find a sample of the collector booster. A hundred cards in the deck with 12 new ones a deck box 10 double-sided tokens one full display commander a life wheel strategy insert and a reference card and uh yeah this is the last one of the boxes we've already reviewed the last three and who was the mysterious mouse card and yeah it's it's been an, an interesting interesting situation some really nice spins and some of the decks especially uh the revenant recon and the um bling game i really like those themes they were quite unique in comparison to the usual kind of decks that we got but in the end overall not too bad as i said before i think i kind of scored the revenant recon perhaps a little bit too low and perhaps it should go up to 7.5 but we will see after this and we'll rearrange everything if necessary either way here we go here we have the little insert that gives you a little bit of fluff and history about Kaust, our commander, and a little bit about the deck and the rules of commander. And there you go. That's one. And then we'll have in here the sample booster pack, the life wheel, which doesn't have an illustration this time around, and the little deck box in case you want to keep your deck stored in here. Of course, it will not hold the deck fully sleeved, especially double sleeved, but eh, hey -oh. And other than that, let's dive into the collector booster sample pack. Here you find three cards. One of them is a token eye card, and two are samples of the showcase that you'll find. One is a rare Rare ones and uncommon or rare mythics. Um, there you go. So let's see what do we get here. We have oh wow, this one is a, a little bit too bad. Very cringled. Tulsimir, Midnight's Light. Okay, and then we get Wisp Drinker, Vampire. So that's that's that. And yeah, the cards are very very pringled. This is the only one out of the four that came with cards that pringled, unfortunately. And then we'll dive into the deck proper. Also, if you're new here, first off, welcome. And uh, secondly, we go and about and review the cards in this deck around the commander, the given commander, not the general, but around the commander and how truly they synergize with the commander and if they've done a good job with that. So this is how we score the deck. And also, if you're interested in buying and selling cards like these ones, we have um, car marketplace in UK. It's our own car marketplace. It's UK exclusive and you'll be able to buy and sell cards like these ones. But do remember that we do not sell cards ourselves, so it's only our users. Anyway, shameless plug over. Here we go. Chaos Eyes of the Glade. Very cool card. I, I can see the illustration is very, very nice. I love and the Weeping Willows, so it's quite nice. Uh, also, if you didn't know, fun fact about Willows, but if you find a Willow in the wild, the bark contains aspirin. So there you go. So this is a 2-2 dry Detective with Naya in the colors, but it only costs two, so that's very interesting. And uh, yeah, I like this actually, because it gives you access to more spells, but it only costs two, so well, that's pretty, pretty nice. And uh, let's see, what does it do? Whenever a creature you control was turned face up this turn, Turn, deals combat damage to a player, draw a card, and then for tapping a turn, a face down attacking creature you control face. Up. So, ooh, I also see the misplacement of the holo stamp. So, the idea is you want to attack your opponent and then flip the cards because, of course, we know that there's morph and there's the now the suspected cards, there's the cloak cards as well that you can, you know, flip around. Yeah, it's interesting. It's, it's this turn. It's interesting. We'll see how it goes. I think it could be a really, really cool interaction in the deck. It's definitely got some 
potential i'll leave it at that it depends on how quickly you can flip because this only flips one card at a time so it doesn't really power up the whole board and you'll have to have ways to flip the card the other cards sorry the other cards that this deck wants up so that is our commander and then we have just kind of the rage mother it's a five five bear it costs five when it enters the battlefield you draw a card for each creature you control with base power and toughness two two so this is for you know the morph creatures the cloak creatures or also the suspected creatures and whenever a creature you control with base power and toughness 2-2 attacks it gets plus 3 plus 3 until the end of turn usually this would be perfect for a bear deck i think this is what i said for our review for it when we open it in the collector booster but the fact that you know the cards in this deck phase down are going to be 2-2 two, two. i see why they put it in here and i think it's going to be synergistic with the commander so let's start let's start we have true identity is the first card send in cham and it costs two white whenever it or another permanent control is turned face up you scry one then draw a card this ability triggers only once each turn so whenever you turn face up you scry one draw a card you can disguise it for one which is really really nice and basically it's going to cost you three plus the one white so that's four to be able to scry draw a card and then give this effect but you don't have to necessarily do it that way you can just play it for two and if you have a lot of cards you can do that see it it's synergistic in a way because it is you know flipping the card around but at the same time it's not synergistic with the whole idea of dealing i'm sorry I, this is off camera <laughs> with dealing damage to your opponent but it's synergistic with what the deck wants to do so <clears throat> that's nice and it allows you to also draw and square before you draw and explained absence costs force an instance for each sorry it's an instant for each player exile up to one target non-land permanent that player controls and for each permanent exile this way its controller clocks the top card of their library and yeah you can turn your face up anytime for its mana cost of the creature card so that's interesting it's um it allows you to exile four permanents so it's not a bad one it allows you to give a cloak the problem is that of course the cloak nobody really knows what they're going to be from the top of their decks so like you could be advantaging your opponents but at the same time because it is for each null and permanent it can be really strong so it's a very interesting removal and i would think it's very very synergistic in general with a deck but not in the way that you would think because it's only to your opponents then we have veiled ascension send shaman when it enters the battlefield you put a flying counter on each face down creature you control very good face down creature you control enter the battlefield with a flying counter on them and at the beginning of your upkeep you may cloak the top card of your library that's very very strong in this deck and it's only four it's why it's very good so far not bad boltmander is a four two goblin wizard it costs four has this guy's two and when it's turned face up you may choose new targets for any number of other spells and or a bit so this is not a bad one actually you can use it uh, defensively now i will say though one thing that i'm realizing real quick is because you have a lot of cards around the three costs you'll want to ramp and play as many as possible and also the the disguise costs are going to be also expensive in cards so i think ramp is going to be important to a certain degree not to the extent that you need to ramp to 10 or something like that as quickly as possible like an eldrazi deck would but i think it's going to be quite important so um yeah anyway yep synergizes with the commander so we'll keep it here and not bad in the end you can just divert any spells or abilities that's not bad at all so show stop in surprise it's an instant cost five choose target creature you control turn it face up if it's face down then it deals damage equals to its power to each other creature very 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 nice and uh, it's an instant speed as well so it's a bit expensive but it's very good next we have tessak judas hellhound is a three three elemental dog it costs four has unleash may have this creature enter the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it it cannot block as long as it has a counter on it other dogs you control have unleash okay and then creatures you control with counters on them have haste and whenever it attacks and one red for each attacking creature so other dogs you control have unleashed is kind of pointless unless you have a lot of dogs and the unleash part it's okay not necessarily used but what is good is whenever it attacks you and one red for each attacking creature allowing you to for example do something like 
these ends, and so you're gonna have to play a lot in combat when you do that. And of course, creatures you control with counters give them haste. It's, it's interesting. It does synergize with the commander, not necessarily. It does allow you to ramp. Experiment 12. Oh, wow, that is a cool one. It's a 4 4 elf lizard warrior that costs 4 is green. Trample. And whenever it or another creature you control is turned face up, you put plus one plus one counters on that creature equal to its power and you can disguise it for five so that's going to be really 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 strong and yeah absolutely super synergistic with the deck again a ramp is gonna be important in this deck now we have print lifter rules also pause and um, do remember that it, the disguise cause you can do it anytime you would do an instant so that is a really important part of this whole thing because that's what allows cause to be stronger now we have the print lifter rules is a two twos that costs two it's green has death touch on when it or another creature you control its turn face up you create a zero zero green ooze creature token with trample token enters the battlefield with x plus one plus one counter on it when x is the number of other creatures you control and you can disguise it as well very nice very synergistic i like it then we have oh panoptic projector costs four generic it's an artifact you tap the next face down creature spell you cast this turn costs three generic last to cast so basically making it for free any one you cast and if turning a face down permanent face up causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger that ability triggers an at all time very strong absolutely very good in this deck then we get the ransom node and in this deck it does Ooh, Ugin's Master is an enchantment cost for generic whenever you cast a colorless creature spell which all of these mysterious creatures that have been cloaked etc are colorless then you manifest the top card of your library, meaning that you put it on the battlefield face down as a 2 2 creature, turn it face up at any time for its mana cost if it's a creature card, just like Cloak. And whenever you attack with the creatures with total power 6 or greater, you may turn a face down creature you control face up. Very, very strong in this deck. I really liked it and it's a very beautiful illustration then we get austere command always good to have just like farewell so i really appreciate them putting it in the deck and then we have dusk and dawn destroy all creatures power three or greater in the aftermath return all creature cards with power two or less from graveyard to your hand and you do have some in the second part um that's not too bad it's a way to remove specific creatures and the first part is a more important part because all your co cloaked and mysterious creatures are all gonna be two of power and um, that's why it's good in this deck that we have exalted angel which makes the returns a four or five angel it costs six has fine when it deals damage you gain that much life you can morph it so another great way to do things and i really like it and in this deck it makes absolute sense and we have fell the mighty destroy all creatures with power greater than the target creature power again very good removals so far very very good removals then hidden dragon slayer is a 2-1 human warrior i would hope that they put some target removal just a couple more target removals here like three or four would be perfect hidden dragon slayer is a 2-1 he's your life linker that costs two and has mega morph three you may cast this card face down as a 2-2 creature for three generic turn this up at any time for its mega morph cost and put a plus one plus one counter on it and it is turn face up destroy target creature with power four greater and opponent controls effectively allowing you to destroy a yeah, target it and it's synergistic so very nice master of pearls that is a cool <laughs> It's the avatar, but it's the pearl bender. Okay, this is a 2 2 human monk that costs two. It morphs for five. And when it's turned face up, all creatures you control get plus two plus two until the turn. It's okay. It's fairly expensive for what it's trying to do. And I'm hoping that between the treasures and the green, we'll be able to get some ramping because all of these morph costs tend to be quite expensive if you think about it. So, yeah, for what it is, it's an alpha strike for five. It does synergize and it can be buffed and pumped up by other things. So, yes. Then we have Mastery of the Unseen. It's an enchantment and it costs two whenever a permanent you control is turned face up. You gain one life for each creature you control. So that's very nice. And for four, you manifest the top card of your library. Very nice. It will be nice if you got to see the top card of your library. So if there are cards in green and I think in white as well, that will allow you to always know what the top card is. That's going to allow you very well to play into these cards. Otherwise, it's a good card. Oh, mirror entity. It's very nice. One, one shape shifts that cost three. It's a changeling. This card is every other creature type and it 
With Axe, it, until the end of the turn, creatures you control have base power and toughness XX and gain all creature types, making all the buffs and counters really, really strong. But I don't quite know that it is necessarily something that you want here. If you have an army of two twos, that is great. But at the same time, yeah, when you flip them around, the base power and toughness, like for example, this one is gonna be a two two no matter what. Um, then changing it to a four four, it can be done, but you have a morph cost of five, for example, and you know, yes, you can flip one at a time with your commander, but what I'm trying to get at is there might be better ways to alpha buff or alpha strike your creatures than this. And I don't really think this is super synergistic with the commander. Welcoming vampire is a two, three vampire. It costs three, it's white flying. Whenever one or more other creatures with power two or less into the battlefield, so a lot of synergy. Now you control, you draw a card. Too bad it's one or more, but it would have been better. That ability triggers only once each turn. This is uh, the, the limit of it, but it's synergistic and it allows you to draw more cards. So why not? Acroma, Angel of Fury. And this is the red Acroma. It's a 6-6 six, six that costs 8. Quite tough to cast. This spell can't be countered. Flying Trample Protection for white and blue. And then for one red, it gets plus 1 plus 0 until the end of turn. And you can morph it for 6. So yeah, it's a very good morph creature. It's very strong and this is more in the top end again hoping that you get some ramp ash cloud phoenix the four one phoenix that costs four flying when it dies re return it to the battlefield face down under your control you can morph it for six and when it's turned face up it deals two damage to each player and it's a very expensive for what it's trying to do yes it's recursive but the fact that it goes face down you're gonna have to pay six every time and to do an extra two damage and eh, man yes it's synergistic but it's not as great chaos warp the usual removal that we see every time i'm not a huge fan of chaos warp i'd rather go the source of plowshares or path to exile myself then we have imperial hellkite it's a six six dragon cost seven has flying and morph eight and then when it's turned face up you may search your library for a dragon card reveal it put it in your hand then shuffle and this is going to be very very good if you have a lot of dragons but if you don't then um, yeah, it's just a big dumb creature that just, you know, face up, does a lot of damage. Might be best if there aren't a lot of dragons in your deck not to play this one and replace it with better. Granted, the morph is a bit limited, if I'm not mistaken. I remember that there was green morph creatures. Uh, the, um, there was a Kazmina, if I'm not mistaken, deck back in 2020 or 2021, correct me if I'm mistaken, but, um, and green was part of the colors. I don't think red was, I, I think blue was for sure. And and um, yeah, so there might be some more creatures there, but the problem is a lot of morph creatures were back in the time of, was it the Onslaught block? So they weren't super, super strong. And I was hoping that we'd get a bit more of the ones that you get in this expansion. So to buff it up a little bit. Anyway, just as well, it's a sorcery. It's classic, cost three, it's red, choose one. If you control commander as you cast a spell, you may choose both. You add one red for each card Card in target opponent's hand and exile the top three cards of your library and play them this turn. So this is a strong creature, uh, sorry, a strong card for ramping and also it allows you to do what red does best which is exile and play from top of your deck so definitely a good way to go about doing that then we have naheb uh, sorry neheb the eternal is a four six zombie miniature warrior that costs five with a flick three whenever this creature becomes blocked if any player loses three life and at the beginning of your post combat main phase add one red for each one life your opponents have lost this turn so again very very good for the whole flipping the problem is if you want to flip them combat this is kind of restrictive so i see that it is kind of synergistic for the ramp part but it's not the way that i would have gone about doing that um then we have scourge oh the throne yay the scourge of the throne is a five five flying death the throne creature and costs six and the throne is when this creature attacks a player with the most life or type for most life put a plus one plus one counter on it and whenever it attacks for the first time each turn if it's attacking the player with the most life or type for most life untap all attacking creature after this phase there's an additional combo pace so this is extremely strong and it untaps even cows so it is synergistic for that reason then we have beast whisper as a two three elf druid that costs four whenever you cast a creature spell you get 
to draw a card. Very good way to draw. It's not synergizing necessarily with the commander, but it's something that I would keep because you need that draw engine to get through your deck. Now we have Death Miss Raptor is a 3-3 Death Doctor. Dinosaur Beast that costs 3. Whenever a permanent control is turned face up, you may return it from Graver to the battlefield face up or face down, and then you can morph it. So this is a Death Doctor. I like this idea because you can use it defensively and block. And the fact that whenever you, you turn something face up, you can put it back into the battlefield in whatever position you want. That's really good. You can do something like preemptive, do this before combat then back into combat as a defensive or whatever you want so i really like this and yeah i think it's synergistic and it's it's kind of like a recursive creature killer and it's a deterrent for your points then we have den protector is a 2-1 human warrior cost two creatures with power less than them protectors power can block it and then for mega morph so if you morph it it gets one plus one when it's turn face up return target card from graveyard to your hand i like this i like this a lot because again it allows to synergize with cards in your graveyard so you can get some of them back and hooded hydra it's a zero zero snake hydra and of course there are some cards that care about like for example the nehib uh, dealing damage directly to your opponent and same thing for cows as well remember that so next up hooded hydra is a zero zero snake hydra costs x and two green and when it's this battlefield does so with x plus one plus one counters on it when it dies you create a one one green snake creature token for each plus one plus one counter on it and then you can morph it for five as as it's turn face up you put five counters on it it's okay i it kind of synergizes with the deck but it's really not that strong and I'd rather get something better. Ooh, wow. I haven't seen the Cloud Scraper in forever. Oh, mamma mia. This is the Crows and Cloud Scraper. It costs a whooping 10. It's a 13 13. And at the beginning of your upkeep, you sacrifice it unless you pay two. It's not cumulative upkeep, it's just upkeep cost. And uh, yeah, you morph it for nine. And it doesn't have trample, it doesn't have anything like that. So it's just a big dumb creature that can be blocked by a 1 1. And uh, yeah, I love seeing this back and play but as i was saying a lot of the cards i mean the, the power creep in magic the gathering in the past i don't even know how long it's been since this card was out has it been almost 20 years now um yeah the power creep has been so strong that cards like these are useless nowadays so yes it synergizes but it's not as good same thing for the cross and colossus nine nine that morphs for eight that does nothing else more than just that now granted there is the the idea of your opponents don't really know which creep creatures are which right everything is secret you're the only one who knows so with that in mind if you can slam off an, a 13 13 and a 9 9 the first time around for flipping it around it's not bad and then if you can bring them back into play with other reanimate shenanigans type effects then that's very good and that's the only reason you would keep it otherwise if you have better morph targets that <laughs> help the board more great if not look at these as kind of alpha strikes then you have obscure and ether is an Shaman costs one green. Face down creature spells you cast cost one generic cost to cast. Very, very good in this deck. And then for two, turn this face down as it becomes a creature. So interesting the second part i don't know how you want to use it as much because in the end in a commander game it's not really necessary especially since you'll have so many two twos i think the first part is much more useful and definitely very good for this like ohran frostfang and i think this is what was it called snap or kalheim i don't remember it's a two six snake that costs five attacking creatures you control have death touch and whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player you draw a card that's very good synergistic with Ka and um i mean it does the same thing that it does with you know cows which is whenever a creature control that was turned face up it deals common damage to a player then you draw a card mm, so it's not necessarily synergistic but the fact that it gives all your attacking creatures death dodge it is going to be a good deterrent for your opponent so next up we have return of the wild speaker it's an instant it costs five choose one draw cards equal to the greatest power among non-human creatures control for example that and then non-human creatures control gets 
plus three, plus three until the end of turn, making an, an alpha strike. And it's a nice way to draw cards and green. So if you don't have a lot of that messed up here situation, if you don't have a lot of draw and you usually draw it tends to be on creatures in these kind of colors, then absolutely keep it. Root elemental is a six, five elemental that costs six. You morph it for seven. And when it's turned face up, you may put a creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. So for example, Colossus, Crows and Cloud Scraper, then that will be really, really strong. And yep, it's synergistic. But again, you need to ramp. And I will say so far, ramping has been very low. We've seen it in only two cards-ish. And uh, it's very situational, that kind of ramp. So we'll see how it goes. Three, four, Sereth the Viper's Fang. Cost four is a legendary human warlock. And other tab creatures you control have Death Touch. Great. Other untapped creatures you control have X Proof. Very good. And then for one, and tap it, untap another target creature you or land you control, making it really synergistic with Chaos, because then it allows you to, yeah, just do Chaos twice in a turn. Seaborn Muse. So this is a great card for overall all decks. Two, four, and as a spirit, it costs five. Untap all permanents you control during each other player's untap step. Very, very, very strong. And with Chaos, and that much more. So yes, it's synergistic with Chaos. Teamer War Shaman. It's a four or five human shaman that costs six. When it enters the battlefield, you manifest the top of card of your library. And then whenever a permanent control is turned face up, if it's a creature, you may have it. Fight target creature you don't control. Very strong, very, very strong. Making all the face up creatures into, well, just kill spells, especially even if you have something like that that gives, um, you know, death touch to your creatures. Absolutely uh, very strong. Then we have Telonite Hermit is a 1-1 one, one Elf Shaman. Cost 4. All Saprolings get plus 1, plus 1. Morph it for 5. And then when it's turn face up, you create 4 Saprolings creature tokens. Not necessarily that strong. And as something that I don't really see the point in having in this tank. It is synergistic, but it's something that you can find better of. And then we have Toski. Bearer of Secrets is a 1-1 one, one squirrel that costs 4. Spell cannot be countered. It is indestructible whenever it attacks. It, oh, sorry. It attacks each combo if able. Whenever a creature you control deals combo damage to a player, draw a card. Very, very good. Another great way to draw cards in this deck. So, uh, does it synergize with Commander? No, but it's important to draw those cards. So, that's very good. Trail Mystery. And that's a great enchantment. Whenever a face down creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may search your library for basic land, reveal it, put it in your hand, then shuffle. So this is what I was looking for. Exactly done. And whenever a primary control is turned face up, if it's a creature, it gets plus two, plus two until the end of turn. More of that, more of that is so necessary and so key to this deck. Whisperwood Elemental. It is a 4-4 elemental, cost five. And at the beginning of your end step, manifest the top card of your library. And then you sacrifice it until the end of turn, face up. No token creatures you control gain when this creature dies manifest the top card of the library therefore replacing any creature that die and then if it's one of those that get returned the better absolutely important very 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 good to keep the board status um yeah just keep manifesting stuff of course the less spells you have manifested the better as i said this is why it would be best to have a way to sift through and know that if you want to put the top creature or sorry top card of your library into play manifested but I Otherwise, it's great. Yodora Grave Gardener is a 5 5 that costs 5 Tree Folk Druid. Whenever another known token creature you control dies, you may return it to the battlefield face down under its owner's control. It's a forest land. Very, very, very good. Again, another way. Hey, it dies. Well, actually, I'm going to reanimate it and put it back into play. Very good. Decimate this red target artifact, creature, enchantment, and land. Very annoying. And again, it's situational, but you know, you could use either um, protection spell here because you already have three wipes or four wipes. So you could use replace it with a protection spell. If not, just keep it in. Um, but yeah, you could definitely replace it for better. Sidar Kondo of Jamura is a 2-5 human 9 that costs 4. It has flanking, so whenever a creature without flanking blocks it, it gets minus 1 minus turn. And creature your opponents control without flying or reach can block creature with power to or less. And then as partner, um, 
yeah, it's good. It's good for the second part, absolutely, because it makes your uh, you able to do the first part a lot more. And yeah, just overall, very, very, very good. So I, I like it. Then we have Life Crafters Bestiary. That's an artifact, cost three generic, and at the beginning of your upkeep, scry one. Whenever you cast a creature spell, you may pay one green. If you do, you draw a card. Another way to draw. Very, very nice. Sorry, this is an artifact, I should put it here. And then Scroll of Fate, it's an artifact. Tap to manifest a card from your hand. Very nice, it allows you to bypass that initial three cost. Then we have the Vista, which is not bad. If you're playing a lot of basic lands, then uh, the Cinder Glade, same thing. Exotic, Fortified Village, Fear Comes Snare, Game Trail, okay. So it's one of those uh, show lands. And Kisig, Wolf Run. Tap to add one generic, X and Gruel and Tap. Tiger Creature gets plus X plus zero and gets Trample until the end of turn. Um, Yeah, if you have mana to pump into something for a turn, it's not bad. But yeah, you're gonna have mana come on to pump into stuff, so yeah. Moss Fire Valley, Moss War Bridge, which is the Highway Land, Scatter Groves, Psycho Land, The Forsaken Gods, Prairie, The Temples, and Path to Exile. Very good. Thank you for putting it in here. And we have Enoch Survivalist. It has Megamorph as the 2 1 for 2, Megamorph for 2, and when it's turn face up, destroy target artifact and enchantment and important controls. Very, very strong in Commander. Then we have Brute Hatch, non Tuko. It's a 1 1 Insect Druid that costs 2 whenever it is dealt damage you may create that many 1-1 one, one green instant tokens i don't really like this even though it is a morph kind of creatures i just don't find it that useful oh nervous gardener is a 2-2 dry in the cost 2 has this guy's one and when it's turned face up social library for land basic land type reveal it put it in your hand then shuffle very very important very very good then we have non to vigilante is a 3-2 insect Druid Mutant that costs four has morph two when it's turned face up, destroy artifacts or enchantment. Again, another nasty little thing. Nature's lore, yes, finally. Explorers, nature's lore, give me more of that. Um, you search your library for a forest card, put that card onto the battlefield and shuffle. Absolutely important fundamentals deck. Sakura Tribe Elder. It is a snake shaman, it is a one-one, it costs two. Search your library for a basic land card, put that card onto the battlefield, tap, and then shuffle. Another way to ramp. There are better ways though to do that. So maybe just remove that and explore in or other ways to go. Uh, at least you have nature's lore. So that's something. So Road Ambitures is a 3-3 dog warrior. Cost four whenever another permanent you control is turn face up. If it's a creature, put two plus one plus one counters on it. So that is very, very strong and very annoying for some of these cards. So I'll keep it there. Of course, if you have stronger, then replace it, but it's not bad. Oh, three visits, search a library for a forest card, put it on the battlefield and then shuffle. Very nice. Oh, wild growth as well. And enchant land whenever land is tapped for mana, it's controlled as an additional. And then Arcane Signet, and then Soul Ring, the Boris Garrison, Command Tower, Branch of the Two, Gruel Turf, the Fake Triumphs, Crows and Verge, the Sacred Peaks, and Selesnia Sanctuary, Temple of the Falls God, Zuidic Cavern. This you can morph it in, so that's not bad. I'll, I did not remember this land at all, but it's nice that you have a land that you can morph in. And then you have four plains, three mountains, and four forests. So that's it for our review for the deck. Now let's have a look. What does it want to do? It wanted to create a creatures that are, are morphed or that have been suspected or cloaked in any way, shape, or form. Flip them around when they do combat damage to a specific player. Then you get to draw more cards. So you have the theme of drawing cards. You have the theme of flipping those more, more hidden creatures around and cloak creatures. So you have that plenty in here and you have quite a lot of that. You have some ways, some decent ways to, you know, like a good base to bump into more lands and or mana, of course. Should you need it, you could go for more. And um, yeah, you have some spot removal. You have some really nice overall removal. I would add maybe one more as a bit of a board wipe. You have, what else? You have good ways of interaction and things are happening when those more creatures or, you know, cloak creatures or whatever will flip around. So that's very nice. Overall, it's good. I don't see the 
usual signets and seals that you would have in here. So that's a bit strange. Um, to be fair, this deck really wants a lot of creatures. This is the, the, the thing with a deck like this, especially because you're playing so many cards that from the top of your deck will get put into play. If it's a spell creature, it's just gonna be dead. You can't flip it around. It's just gonna stay as a two, two. So the thing that they did right is they didn't go too heavy in the artifacts. They didn't go too heavy in the enchantments and instants and the ones that they did keep, they did keep correctly. What is it lacking? I believe that is needing a little bit more protection, your board protection especially, so it's a fairest protection and any other way to, you know, protect your entire board, which, you know, between white and you have quite a lot of, so it shouldn't be too troublesome to splash in them, them in. And for example, Hurricane Intervention has been printed so many times by now in the past few expansions that it shouldn't be too hard to get a hold of and it shouldn't be too expensive. So I believe a little bit more protection for your creatures in your board state is a necessary thing. You could also, if necessary, go down the route of creating more tokens. I still believe you will struggle with the flipping of more than a couple of cards per turn. This is with cows and plane because some of these costs are quite prohibitive and you're not the kind of deck that has Eldrazi lands or Tron lands or stuff like that. So I believe that in fact, you should focus maybe a little bit more on the right kind of cards, perhaps go more into the creature side so that if they do get cloaked or manifested in, then you can still flip them around to ramp into more cards. I think that this is one of the things that is lacking, not severely, it does have some ramp, don't get me wrong, but it should have a bit more of that. So a bit more of that, a bit more of target removal and a lot more of protection on your bow state. Um, so those are the three things that I think the deck needs. And as I said, there are cards that you could definitely replace with better morph and also this guy is creatures in this kind of deck. I was just checking real quick. Yeah, I think it's it's important that you do use some of these expansions, best cards in these colors to splash them in. I think it's gonna be necessary to do that. I didn't expect them to put the best ones in here because let's be realistic. They still have to sell you buying the other boosters and trading and all that stuff. But yeah, I think out of all of these decks, this one is the best place one. I think that the the Revenant one is definitely a 7.0 to maybe a 7.5. And I will stay with the 6.5 for the Blaine game and the 7.0 for the Deep Clue C. I think this is a 7.5 as a base. 7.5 is more than enough and it's really, really good. I didn't believe it would be, but I think there's more synergy. Again, when we're scoring, it's not about, oh, is it gonna destroy your opponents or is this gonna be the strongest deck? We're scoring about the synergy energy of the commander and how much of what the commander wants to do is in there and how focused it is so that you don't have to go out and you know <laughs> replace half of your deck and in with some more sensical cards therefore I do th believe that this is a 7.5 because of that. And I'm pretty surprised because I thought this would be the least one uh, in my opinion, seeing it from, you know, a top level overview. I didn't really dive in. This is the first time I read these cards anyway, as a deck. So that's that. If you don't agree or you agree, or if you have any ideas or miss anything, let us know in the comments down below as we read and apply to every one of them. If you like the video, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel as it does help small channels like ours quite significantly and uh, we hope to see you in the next videos we will be unboxing a lot more things in the channel for as long as we can and until the next one we wish you a lovely day a blessed day be good be kind and we'll see you in the next video bye